Hello ladies and gents, this is Iris Santos with Team Bazinga, and today we will be discussing Moore's Law. Now let's get started. Our topic for today will cover what Moore's Law is, who created the law, computer growth over time, the benefits and implications of the law, why it's still true today, and if there's an end to the law. So what is Moore's Law? Moore's law is a computing rule which predicts that the number of components in integrated circuit chips will double every 18 months. This means that the number of microcomponents that could be placed in an integrated circuit or microchip of the lowest manufacturing cost was doubling every year and that this trend would likely continue into the future. To keep up with Moore's law, engineers must keep shrinking the size of transistors. Moore attributed this to two major trends. Companies were finding ways to make smaller components, and they were getting better at arranging the components to conserve space on the semiconductor wafer. Moore's law is not a law of physics. It is merely an accurate observation on what electrical engineers can do with better system design. Over the years, transistors continued to shrink and computational power continued to increase. Companies that can keep their tech teams humming will reap profits and power. Those that can't will fade away. So who created Moore's Law? Well, in 1965, Gordon Moore, co-founder of Intel, observed that since the microprocessor was introduced in 1959, the number of transistors per square inch on integrated circuits had doubled every year since the integrated circuit was invented. Moore predicted that this trend would continue for the foreseeable future. This observation became the foundation to Moore's Law. In subsequent years, the pace slowed down a bit and more reduced the rate of growth to a doubling every two years. The transistor is a device designed to control electron flows and is the basic idea for the way all electronics work. Think of it like a wall switch that controls whether electric current will flow to light a lamp. The capabilities of many digital electronic devices are strongly linked to Moore's Law processing speed, memory capacity, sensors, and even the number and size of pixels in digital cameras. This graph depicts that over the years, as the processes are refined to make components smaller and more compact, semiconductor companies are able to fit more transistors on a single semiconductor. More transistors means more power and better performance. So what does Moore's Law mean to manufacturing? Well, Moore saw that as techniques improved and components on circuits shrank, the price for producing an individual component dropped. Semiconductor companies had an incentive to refine their production techniques. Not only were the new circuits more powerful, the individual elements were more cost efficient. Production continued to become more efficient, which in turn helped drive innovation to create even smaller components. As techniques improved, the potential for defects decreased, which meant that circuit manufacturers could work with larger semiconductor wafers and produce more chips per wafer. So what are the impacts of this law? Well, as circuits become more complex, the cost to produce the circuit as a whole goes up. So while the individual components are inexpensive to produce, really complex circuits are more expensive to develop. Circuit cleverness refers to the physical limitations of a semiconductor. Moore believed that the semiconductor industry was approaching the limit for some techniques, such as conserving space on a circuit. He believed that we would reach a limit on how clever we would arrange components, eventually we would have the optimal use of space. Once that factor is removed from the equation, the rate of advancements must slow down. Moore believed after a few years, components would double only every 24 months. A negative implication of Moore's Law is obsolescence. As technologies continue to rapidly improve, these improvements can be significant enough to rapidly render predecessor technologies obsolete. In situations in which security and survivability of hardware and or data are vital, or in which resources are limited, rapid obsolescence can pose obstacles to smooth or continued operations. Also, the toxic materials used in the production of modern computers, obsolescence if not properly managed can lead to harmful environmental impacts. Some interpret the law to be about the doubling of processing power, not the number of transistors. 
Moore's Law has been interpreted in at least three variations, none of which Moore ever stated. The first one, the power of microprocessors doubles every 18 months. The second version is computing power doubles every 18 months. And the third, the price of computing falls by half every 18 months. The law sometimes seems to be more of a self-fulfilling prophecy than an actual law, principle, or observation. Moore's law isn't really a law at all. In fact, there's no fundamental law of physics behind it. Moore's law only holds true because of the actions of human beings. Much of the reason is psychological and driven by the market. Companies that make integrated circuits are competing against each other. Every corporate executive has in mind that if their company does not double the power of their circuits in 18 months, another company will beat them to it. Because companies do not want to give an edge to competitors, they pour a lot of money into research and development. These R&D divisions work to develop new techniques to create smaller components and arrange them in such a way that maximizes their performance. It costs a lot of money to keep up the cycle of research, but this cost is balanced against the threat of competitors gaining a foothold and dominating the market. Consumers also drive Moore's Law. The rapid development of electronics has created a sense of expectation among consumers Every year, faster and more advanced electronics hit the market. From the consumer's point of view, there's no reason not to expect something better next year. So will there ever be an end to the law? The law cannot be sustained indefinitely. It can't continue forever. The nature of exponentials is that you push them out and eventually disaster happens. It's certainly possible that computing progress could slow or fizzle. But we have to consider the size of the chip business, its importance to the global economy, the depth of the research pipeline, and the industry's continued ability to deliver the goods. Any physical quantity that is growing exponentially predicts disaster. It comes to some kind of an end because you can't go beyond certain major limits. However, it's difficult to pinpoint exactly when that might happen. We could hit a technical barrier that prevents engineers from finding a way to make smaller components, but even if we don't encounter a technical barrier, economics could come into the equation. If it's not economically feasible to produce circuits with smaller transistors, there may be no reason to pursue further development. The problem with predicting a specific date when one or more of these barriers will stop progress is that we have to base it on what we know today. But every day, engineers are learning new ways to design, build, and produce circuits. What we know tomorrow may make the things that seem impossible today completely achievable. Moore's Law is the foundation for exciting new technological capabilities and improved energy efficiency. It describes a driving force of technological and social change that has dramatically enhanced the impact of digital electronics in nearly every segment of the world economy. While Moore's Law is a fundamental driver of the semiconductor industry, what is even more important is what it delivers to the end user. The evidence of Moore's Law is everywhere, embedded in devices millions of people use every day, such as personal computers and laptops, mobile phones, and common household appliances and consumer electronics, as well as inspiring, important technological innovations in automobiles, life-saving medical devices, and spacecrafts. In summation, we've defined Moore's Law and introduced its creator, Gordon Moore. We've also reviewed a brief history and evolution of the microchip as well as the benefits and impacts of the law and why the law still holds true. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Moore's Law. Until next time, this is Iris Santos with Team Bazinga. This Moore's Law presentation was brought to you by Team Bazinga with the help of these articles.